The Germans asked us, in the case of British landing, what would you do? We said, we would resist because we feel that they want to annihilate us. But it was never the question that we would do it together or in collaboration with the Germans. The basic fact is that whereas the uh, Chetniks started talking of collaboration and actually collaborating as early as November 41 and went right on till, till 45, um, the partisans did not actually collaborate. You know, that sort of warfare, all kinds of funny things happen, but that, those are the facts. McLean wrote that Tito had the wholehearted support of the civilian population. Mikhailovich, however, was thoroughly discredited. That's a lie, I know that, because we were with the Serbian people, the Chetniks, and they loved Mikhailovich. The people I saw were from Mikhailovich. The people I heard talk about the country talked about Mikhailovich saving the country. They didn't want to form a communist government, particularly the Serbs. He, he wasn't really looked upon exactly as a general, more of a, a, a leader and a saint-like person. They thought of him as someone really great. That's the way I saw it, and I'll always remember it that way. He had in mind the liberation of all of Yugoslavia, not necessarily just the Serbian people, but he was misunderstood by British. Tito did not enjoy the support of anybody I ever spoke to in Serbia. Uh, so that was equally manifestly a stupid statement. I don't see how McLean could possibly have come to believe that. because He'd never been in Serbia. He had none of his officers in Serbia at that time. I think there's no doubt that uh, Tito and the partisans were on good terms with the civilian population uh, in the areas I travel through myself, that is in Bosnia, Dalmatia, um, and the islands. And Tito took a lot of trouble to see that he was on good terms, that the partisans were on good terms with, with the um, with the civil population. McLean's report to Churchill was conclusively pro-partisan. Taking a long view, the case for wholehearted support of the partisans is strong. There seems little doubt that nothing short of a large-scale armed intervention will prevent them from taking power in Yugoslavia as soon as the Germans are finally driven out. In fact, they effectively control large areas already. Furthermore, they can count on the powerful backing of our Soviet allies. Mikhailovich, on the other hand, will have no prospect of uniting the country. His policy is, in any case, pan-Serb, anti-Croat and violently reactionary, and is therefore opposed to our own aims. The support which we give him can only serve to prolong existing internal dissensions, and by it, we are in return for no corresponding advantage, prejudicing our position with the partisans and driving them more and more to the conclusion that the Soviet Union is their only friend. McLean's main recommendations were unequivocal. He said support for Mikhailovich should be discontinued, aid to the partisans should be substantially increased, suitable targets in Yugoslavia should be attacked from the air whenever possible. When Churchill and Tito eventually met in August 1944, Tito told Churchill that he had no wish to impose communism on Yugoslavia after the war. But when asked to state this publicly, he refused, arguing that it might seem as though it had been forced upon him. The most dramatic effect of Churchill's decision to back Tito was the stepping up of supplies to his partisans. In just two nights, they received as much as Mihailovich had in two years. Within a few weeks, the Americans had poured in 6,000 tons. Not to be outdone, the British soon delivered a further 18,000 tons. During the previous 18 months, barely 30 tons had been dropped to Mihailovich. As one of the partisan leaders put it, the people can see our power. They can realize that the Allies have acknowledged us. In the whole time I was in Yugoslavia, I got, I think, five or six drops. When they were dropping to the partisans, they were dropping 60 planes in one night. Churchill must have hoped all these arms would be used to kill Germans. It was not to be. 
it must have been known that a great amount of the warlike stores being supplied to the partisans would be used against the Chetniks. They would have been remarkably stupid if they hadn't understood it. Tito gained Allied recognition as a belligerent force and the promise of immediate and large-scale military help, apart from other help. The moment he achieved that, he and his forces began behaving like the Mihailovich forces had been behaving hitherto. They took the view, as indeed Mihailovich had, that the winning of the war was up to the great allies. No Yugoslav guerrilla could possibly have the necessary force to beat the Germans. Therefore, having left the Germans, the big enemy, to the great allies, the logical first priority for both Tito and the Mihailovich forces was, was to try to eliminate each other from the point of view of who was going to prevail after the war. In that sense, uh, once uh, the, the Tito forces got formal recognition and arms, they in fact ceased any serious aggressive steps against the Germans. Mikhailovich's forces consisted mostly of Serbians. So did Tito's. So there were very few Croats, some Slovenes to a bigger degree. The, the fight was between Serbs and uh, uh, the family were split. This was Serbian heritage, the history, to fight and to always pay for freedom with blood. Since they wanted to help Tito and finish with the civil war in Yugoslavia, uh, they British had to do everything possible to make him strong, to help him achieve the victory, and then not have to worry about the civil war. To support both sides in, in a civil war is a very 